So before we get to learn about this story, getting through Thursday, I need to teach you some vocabulary words. And we're going to use those vocabulary words to answer our question today, our social studies question. And our social studies question today is, how does scarcity affect our community? Okay, so we've been learning a lot about our community, right? Our neighborhood, our city. We've learned about why, why rules and laws are important. We've learned about who makes those rules and laws. And we've learned about role models in the community. And so now we're going to learn about how scarcity affects that community. Okay, so that's a big word we're going to focus on today. Say that word for me. Scarcity. Yeah, so we'll change up. Ready? Scarcity. Scarcity. Three syllables. The initial sound is s scarcity. Very good. So the word scarcity means when something is not enough. So this is a shelf. And it's got a lot of toilet paper on it. And what about this side of the picture? It doesn't have a lot of toilet paper on it, does it? That's because right now, toilet paper is scarce. That means when you go to the grocery store or to the pharmacy, you might look at shelves and they might look empty. That means something is happening in our world and right now it's the coronavirus that is causing this good to be scarce. And so, raise your hand if you've seen an empty shelf when someone was looking for toilet paper. Yeah, that's because toilet paper right now is scarce. Toilet paper is a good. Okay, here's a picture of some goods. Goods are something that someone made or someone grew and we buy goods because we're consumers. Can you say consumer? Point to yourself. Say, I'm a consumer. Yeah, we're consumers because we buy goods. We go to the grocery store and look, we might have bought some Doritos and some corn and some lettuce. Or we might have gone to the grocery store and bought toilet paper. Those are goods. And right now, toilet paper is scarce. There's a few other things that are scarce right now. Can you think of anything else? Yeah, maybe your favorite type of bread isn't at the grocery store right now. And that could be because goods are scarce right now. We're, we're experiencing scarcity. I've got a picture of some combs. Who uses combs? You guys do? Yeah. Is there a job that uses combs or brushes? A barber, yeah. And a barber is a service. Can you say service? Service, yeah. A barber is a service because barbershop, being a barber is a job that people do to help others. And so right now in your community, you might be experiencing scarcity where there's not enough. There's not enough jobs helping others and there might not be enough goods right now. And that's happening to a lot of communities around the entire world because of the coronavirus. Because if there aren't a lot of jobs right now making the goods, we can't make the goods as quickly. Or maybe you're thinking, well, the grocery store has shorter hours. That means that there's not as many people working at the grocery store. So maybe that service is scarce. I bet scarcity has affected your family just like it's affected a lot of families around the world. So we're going to learn about scarcity with goods and services by reading about this story. Getting through Thursday. The title's so important that they write it twice and this picture might give us a hint. There's a calendar. Ooh, and it says report card and they've circled the Thursday. Getting through Thursday. Saturdays, we're off to the library, and at nighttime, Mama is yelling, Shut those books now and shut those eyes. That's because Sunday is early morning church, and then Mama wants our eyes and ears wide open. Mondays and Tuesdays amble by just fine. Wednesdays, we feel it coming. 
like an earthquake rumbling underground, making folks edgy before they even know why. And the next day, my family and I grit all we got toward getting through Thursday. That's because payday at Mama's school where she's a lunch lady doesn't come till Friday. Mama, there's nothing to drink in here. That's my older sister, Shauna, calling from behind the refrigerator door. Boss, it ain't broken, Mama calls back. Shauna frowns and mumbles, but I see her put her face to the faucet and slurp in a huge sip. Ain't no more toothpaste. Now what? That's my big brother, Davis, on the way to his girlfriend, Tracy's house. Mama swipes the baking soda off the shelf and hands it to him. Told you a hundred times you don't need sweet taste and mint to make your smile sparkle. Davis grumbles through his teeth, but when he comes out of the bathroom, he's sparkling. Now it's my turn. Chatter's hungry, Mama. Chatter's my pint-sized parakeet, throwing an owl-sized fit. Mama opens her handbag and takes out a little plastic packet. Here you go, Andre. Lucky someone left them on a tray, so I've been saving them. Half for today, half for tomorrow. Thanks, Mama. I pour some sunflower seeds into Chatter's dish, and for the rest of the day, I hear him chirping like a robin after rain. Every week's the same. The only thing different is the things we run out of. Every week except one this particular week seemed like I had no problems. That's because of what my teacher, Mr. Mitchell, said the day before. Told us there were two third graders who made the honor roll and looked right at me and Trisha Thomas with a big wide smile when he said it. I couldn't wait. Report cards come in tomorrow's mail. Beginning of the school year, Mama had said, any of you get on the honor roll, we'll drop everything and throw a party. So let's think about the beginning of our story. In the beginning, we've learned about the character and we've learned about the setting. Yeah, we've learned the character Andre and Shauna and Mama, Mr. Mitchell. And what's the setting? Yeah, we've been at two places so far. Actually, it's talked about three, right? Being outside, going to the library and church, and then being at home. And then now we're at school. So the setting's where the story takes place. Let's keep reading to see in the middle of the story what the problem is. At night, I glanced at the calendar. Then I blinked, thinking maybe I'd read it wrong. But there it was, bold and black as could be, Thursday. I ran to the window just to see the first star and wish on it. Wish with all my might that report card day wasn't really on a you-know-what day. I finally got to sleep that Wednesday night after all. No one mama always keeps her promises. So I think he's really worried because like he said at the beginning of the story, on Thursday their goods are really scarce, right? Because mama doesn't get paid till Friday. But he wants to have a party for his report card. All next day I was jumping out of my skin, wondering about when mama would open her mail. I raced home from school and there they all were, our report cards. I put mine at the bottom of the mail. Every minute crept by slow as a snake. Finally, Mama noticed the mail, and I held my breath. She sighed as the gas bill made a with her tongue about the junk mail. Then she said, hmm, report cards. She opened Davis's first. Improvement in English, good, she muttered. But what's this? Two science papers not handed in? I'll get to it, Mama, Davis said. You'll get to them now, she said. But first call Shauna. Yes, ma'am, Davis grumbled, grabbing his backpack. Wow, Mama said to my sister. 89.4%. Almost honorable. You did good. Really good. Phew. For a second, I thought Shauna beat me. Suddenly. Mama was saying, Andre, Andre, Andre. She scooped me into a hug dance and whirled me around the living room singing, you did it, you did it, a whopping 90.3%. 
Shauna hugged me right along with Mama. Me and Davis, we did our five-part handshake. After a while, everybody calmed down, and Mama continued making spaghetti for supper. Shauna started shrieking. My blush brush fell into the toilet. How am I going to perk up my cheeks? Ain't that why God made fingers for pinching color into them? Mama asked. What am I supposed to do about my bandana? Dress rehearsals tomorrow, Shauna went on. She was, a, she was a West African woman in a play and needed a head wrap. Use a towel for now, Mama said, and be thankful the real play isn't till Saturday. Shauna stomped and slammed the door, but later I saw that zigzag towel sticking out of her backpack. Davis was out of loose leaf paper. Shauna ripped a sheet from her tablet. Here, do your math on this. It's supposed to be loose leaf. Davis said. I looked through our junk drawer and fished out the hole puncher. Mama smiled and grabbed the paper. Cha-ching, 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 the puncher went. There you go. Happy now? Davis shook his head looking at the punched paper. He couldn't hide his smile and soon we were all laughing and his math did get done. So let's think about what the problem in this story is. I think you guys already know because you guys are going to use the vocabulary words that we learned at the beginning. Now, what's the problem for Andre? Their goods might be scarce for them right now. There's just not enough of it. And they use it all week, and then it becomes scarce. Kind of like when we go to the grocery store right now, some of the goods might be scarce. So they have to be problem solvers throughout the week. Little by little, my frown took over. Why is, why is Andre still upset? What's his problem? Yeah, Andre wanted a party for his report card, but all the goods are scarce. Remember the toothpaste, the blush brush, the drinks in the refrigerator. And so I don't know if a party's been planned for him because it's Thursday. My problem today was bigger than all of those things and the night was marching on. I watched mama doing kitchen things. She saw me eyeing her and read my mind. Angel baby, she said like she always does when she needed to tell me something I didn't want to hear. Tomorrow we'll have your celebration because you know what today is. That did it. Her face got blurry because my feelings were spilling out. I sure do know what today is. Today is report card day, not tomorrow. I don't care if it's Thursday or not. You promised, Mama. You said we'd drop everything and celebrate that very day. I broke away and slammed the door like Shauna and sunk down behind it. I heard them all whispering together out there. I didn't care what they were saying. I knew it was more talk about what we can't do and can't have all because this day is wrong. I thought about taking every calendar in the whole wide world and crossing out the Thursdays as if that was going to change things. But sometimes that kind of daydream turns the anger into something else. And pretty soon, it's not as bad as the minute before. So he's starting to feel a little bit better. You're right, Andre, Mama said as she opened the door. Report card day is today even if it is a, you know what, Thursday. And we should be celebrating like I promised. Now, mind you, this is a dress rehearsal, but it's the best we can do today. So a dress rehearsal is where you act out things, and then on the final production is where you have everything for it. So let's see what they do for their dress rehearsal. Then Mama and Davis and Shauna broke into a happy report card day to you chorus. Shauna held a pretend plate and set it on the coffee table. Okay, said Davis, pretending to light some candles. Make your wish and blow them out. I frowned. Come on. Shauna yelled at me. What's a report card day cake without some candles? I blew out the imaginary candles. <sighs> what about the ice cream? Shauna said. Today's you know what and you know what that means. Davis said, right, I said, but at least there's cake. And we were laughing again like never before. When we got calm, Davis pretended to take something off a pile. Here you go, he said, handing the thin air package my way. 
I pretended to tear the wrapping paper. A Buffalo Bills pencil, I shouted. Thanks. That night when Mama tucked me in, she settled herself on the mattress and sang, Hush, little darling, don't say a word. Friday is coming, ain't you heard? I threw my arms around her neck then hugged her song and her promise close. The next night, I got a real Buffalo Bills pencil in real wrapping from Davis. Same with Mama's real t-shirt and the real sports sticker from Shauna. I blew out real candles on a real cake after making a real wish. And of course, there was real ice cream. And six days after, things were back to normal. But something about me was different. Our weeks are still the same. The only thing different is the things we run out of. Remember, their goods become scarce. We still feel the rumbling on Wednesdays and we still grit all we got. But getting through Thursday isn't so hard. Ever since I got my gifts that report card day, especially the one that didn't cost a dime. The end. And so how did Andre and his family solve the problem? Yeah, I agree with you. I'm going to say same, same, same. I think even though their goods were scarce until Friday, they used what they had and they were problem solvers. They worked together as a team and as a family to make Thursday special because it was report card day. And so if we think about how in our community right now, some goods, the things we buy, and some services, the things that people do to help other people, they might be scarce right now. There might not be enough, or we might not be buying them. And we are just going to have to do what Andre and his family did and try and grit it through until goods and services aren't so scarce. And that would mean that they were available again. And so the reason that some things are scarce is because of the virus and our economy is changing. So it's our job as part of a community to try our best to stay positive and be problem solvers. So I want you to think about the goods and services that might be scarce in your community right now and ways that you can get through it. See you tomorrow.